Hey Titans, Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, we're going to be going over a actual piece of equipment that I wrote out in Core that allows you to be able to adjust all of the different things that you can adjust on your player through equipment. Now there may be a few more of these. If I missed a few, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I will go ahead and update the piece of equipment. Now, as always, if you would like to go ahead and download the scripts and everything, there's a link in the description down below. In this video, I will be showing you how you're able to use this piece of equipment as a reference point to be able to add and change your character's stats just by based on a piece of equipment from within the interface. And so to give you an example, if I just go to the helmet here, uh, you are able to change the artwork. It's really just the script that you want. I just made this really quickly. And so what we have here is when you select the helmet, I've added a bunch of different custom parameters here, a bunch of custom properties that allows you to change values on your character based on what you select here. So for example, right now we have it to change health. And so to actually change your health on pickup, which means if we were to start at 100 health and we wanted to change the player's health when they picked up this helmet, we could go ahead and do that. So as long as this is got a check mark, then it will change the health. And the new health is our actual player health will be 200, but our actual maximum health will be 500. Now, the same thing is true with regen and all these different things. So as an example, the reason I have new health set to 200 and max health set to 500 is this regen here, you can either have it as a decay. So as long as you have regen active, if you have it as a negative number, your character will slowly lose health over time. And if you have it as a positive number, it will actually gain health. And the amount of health is per tick so how much health per tick you get, and the tick time is how long it takes in between ticks. So for example, with this, if we were to regain 25 health, it would be every one second. I've also added a few other things here as you will kind of go through all of these, but like as an example, you can change your player's actual name, and so I called it title because we are changing the player's title when they pick up, or we're changing the player's name when they pick up the item. So for example, I have it as admin. I should have it as like Titan. And so when I pick up the item, my name will change. So just to give you, give you an example of these things working, let's go ahead and change some values just so you can see. Um, well, actually, let me just fire it up real quick with the current values. So I picked up the helmet. You can see down at the bottom. Let me go ahead and make the viewport bigger. You can see that I'm slowly regenning health. And I don't know why I didn't change my title. Let's double check that. Maybe it's because I spawned around the helmet, so one second. All right, so my name's Mordecai on the top left. I picked this up, now I'm Titan Mordecai. And you can see that it's regenerating my health over time. Now, a few other parameters that we've seen were, well, we didn't see it, but a few other things that I have it set to, it's kind of hard to tell with this level I have here but my character's speed changed as I picked up the helmet and I'm also able to jump six times as opposed to one time and so there's a lot of different things you can change with this so as an example if I switch this to a thousand health and we put this to zero the tick time will be every frame and so every time the server ticks, and I believe right now that core servers tick at 10, uh, 10 hertz, so it's basically going to do this 10 times a second. So we have a bunch of different other options, but let's just show you that this is actually working. So when I pick up the helmet now, my max health will be 1,000, my new health will still be 200 because we have the regen set. It's gonna go up one health, so really it's gonna go up 10 health every second, but you're gonna see it go one at a time now. So if we go back to the helmet, we 
spawn in. So now you can see that our health is going up as we have this helmet. Now the cool thing is, is it's also coded that when you get shot, the so once we hit max health, it stops. And then if you start getting shot, the it'll continue to regen, but this kind of gives you a boilerplate where you could take it and make it so it's only active after, for example, three seconds after the player gets hit or something like that. And you can mock up a lot of different things with these different settings and different values that you can change as a player. And so, if we go back to this again, we also have gravity scale, we have max walk speed, max swim speed, jump counter, uh, max acceleration, we can change the acceleration. It's hard to tell with the speed stuff right now. Um, let's go ahead and just put some objects in the world real quick. We're just putting some bullets to show some reference points here. Make the viewport bigger again. So this is my current run speed without the equipment. And then when I pick the helmet up, you can see that my speed has increased. So one more thing we'll show before we hop into the code is go ahead and do a multiplayer preview. Now for whatever reason, core opens a full screen and then it lags my computer out a bit. Oh, actually that time it saved my settings. There we go. So we can see that both players are called Mordecai. It's because I've, I've picked up the helmet on both of these characters and I have a piece of code to change it to Mordecai because the preview, I found a loop that the preview, regardless if you start and stop it over and over, it remembers what you set the player's name to. And so I'll have to do a change uh, to the code after this video and before I upload the code to actually check that if the player's name was ever changed and to not change it again. Or else you get, for example, when I pick this up, Titan Mordecai, I would be Titan, 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 Titan Mordecai as an example. Um, I don't believe I'm going to be able to kill this player with this basic rifle, but you can see that I'm able to do damage, but it's still slowly regaining health. And then when it gets to max, it stops. And then I can shoot, I need to reload. And you get the point. So it's pretty cool that you're able to do all of that just from custom parameters. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So first as a disclaimer, I just started learning Lua. I'm by no means a coder, but I'm going to teach you guys what I've learned thus far. So if there's anything wrong in this video in terms of, or in the code, something I could be doing better, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. I do have the code functional and that's what I focused on. I'll focus on optimization and getting everything working better after it's already functional. And I recommend you guys do the same, especially when you're first learning. So the very first line, now I'm going to do my best to explain this because if you are brand new to coding, this might look extremely scary. So I'm going to do my best to explain it. And but by bare minimum, you should at least be able to mess with some stuff and uh, you know change it around and so the very first thing that we do is on line one we create a variable and a variable essentially stores a piece of information and so what we're doing is we are making a new variable called new equipment and we are getting it from script parent and so what that means is is that our script is a child of our piece of equipment. And so by doing script.parent, we're referencing the actual piece of equipment. And so that allows us to do things when this piece of equipment is actually picked up. So if we hop back into the code, the next lines here you'll see is the variables for our custom properties. Now, you wouldn't need all this stuff right here lines three through 24, if you were not using custom properties, if you just hard coded everything in, this all wouldn't really need to be there. 
However, if you're wanting to use custom properties, what that is, is you can see like we have this prop change health equals new equipment, get custom property, change health. And how this is generated is, we go back into core here and we select our piece of equipment. We can see that all of these different custom properties are from add a custom property. And so the main ones we're using is a Boolean. And so what a Boolean is, is it simply true or false. And so, oops, go back to custom here. So a Boolean is this checkbox here. So if it's got a check mark, it's true. If it's got no check mark, it's false. The other ones we, we are adding is an int. Now an int is a number. And because we are changing player stats, we're using ints quite a bit. Now float is also a number. However, it's got a decimal point. And so it allows decimal points within that. The only other one I believe that we're using in this code is string. Now a string is simply some text. And the only one I'm using that for is the uh, change the player title. And so because that is text, it's a string. And so made all these custom properties. And then once we do that, core will provide us this code snippet here, which allows us to reference in our code all of these different custom parameters. So as opposed to in our code having to write the numbers directly, say that it was something that we wanted to change quite frequently or make it as a template or something like that, we would go ahead and make it as a custom parameter and then just reference these variables when we needed to use those numbers. And so it's a pretty slick system. I like that Core makes it so easy to be able to do that. Now the other one that we're referencing is the actual Helm prop. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the custom property of Helm prop and what that is, is it's the actual, if we go back here, it's the actual model of the helmet. And so how I did that was if we go right here, this folder is all of the different models, all of the different assets that I kit bashed together to make this beautiful helmet that you see here. And because it's in a folder, I simply clicked on the script and then I dragged the folder while select, so highlight the script, clicked the folder and I dragged it into custom properties. And then that allows us to reference those objects in our script. So that's pretty much it for these lines. This is all generated by core. One thing is, is in terms of the variables to make them easier to understand, you could rewrite them and get rid of this prop. I didn't do that because I wanted to leave it the same as how core generates it just to make it as easy as possible to make changes later. So now that we have referenced all of our custom parameters, we've referenced the equipment and we've referenced the actual objects that are the forming the model of the helmet. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom of the code here. So now we have what's called event listeners. And so what event listeners are is when something happens, it will do something else. And so game dot player joined event, this is from cores API that it's an event listener that when a player joins, you can then do a piece of code. And so what we're doing is we're firing this function on player joined. And so what we're doing on on player joined up on line 26 here is we are, here's the function, we are passing in the player and then we are checking if the object, which in this case is a valid player. So we're basically, this is the player. So we're checking if the object is valid. So simply the object is a player and player is with quotes player. So basically what this is doing is, is, is making sure that the player that we passed is actually an object and it's actually a player. And this is just a way to double check that somehow some other object isn't somehow firing the script or doing something that it shouldn't be doing. The other thing we do on player join is we then are passing the player to another event listener and we are allowing it to fire the on player died event when the player dies. So this is the actual 
event listener and then we're connecting it to this function. We'll hop into this function in a bit, but we're going to go over first the on player join function. And so within this function, it's just doing more naming of variables, providing creating new variables and storing the data. And so one of the things is you'll see player.name. And so because we referenced player here in the function, we made sure it's valid, we are able to get the player.name. Now the reason I'm what I'm doing in this line is I'm changing the player's name to Mordecai. Now I mentioned this earlier, but I ran into a little bug when I kept doing previews over and over that it was messing up the title section of the code. And so I'm going to go ahead and fix this. You don't really need to worry about this. I'll go ahead and fix it. And then in the downloadable version of this, this won't really be an issue. And so what we're doing is we know that we are going to be changing the player's stats when they pick up the equipment. And so what we need to do is we need to store a variable of their current stats. So that way, if the player, if it, for whatever reason, the, we want to revert the player's stats back when they get rid of the equipment, or if they die, if they drop the equipment, or something like that happens, we're able to do that. And so we're simply making old health, old max health, old acceleration as variables, and then we are referencing the player and then what it is that we're trying to get from the player. And so in this case, we are trying to get player hit points, and so we are calling that old health. And same thing is true with all these other lines. So old max health, we're getting player dot max hit points, max acceleration, etc. So that's all that it does on the player join. So the next thing that it does is when we actually when the player actually picks up the piece of equipment, we referenced what that means on line number one. So it's new equipment, and then this is the equipped event. And then so when a player actually runs over the equipment trigger is basically what this means, then we're going to fire this function. And so we're firing on equip, on equipped. And so on equipped is once again, now, I don't know if you have to double check this, but I have it. It's the same line that we had on player join. If object is valid player, so if you know the, the player is an object and it's valid and the player is a player, then we start doing this. And so this variable isn't used. I'm not really sure what I was doing there. The regen is definitely working. So we'll just skip that for now, and then if I see something that We'll just assume that this could be deleted right now, but I'm going to double check. So now what we're doing is if prop player title is active, so what this means is, is it's referencing the Boolean that we created right here. And then in the custom properties, player title active, if this checkbox is checked, then this boolean is true. And so what we're doing is if prop title is active, if it's true, then do this. And so if it's false, the, we'll just skip this if statement. And so if we have that with a checkbox, it checks it to make sure it's true. And then what we do is we take the player's name and we're changing it now. So it's the opposite of up here. And what we're doing is we're adding prop player title, which is referenced up at the top. And it's our string, which is our new title. And I can't remember what this is called, but basically these two dots mean that we are putting two things together. And so this, lo this looks a bit weird because we are putting together two different variables. So this is the player name. So in my case, it would be Mordecai. The title is Titan. And I also need to add a space here. And so I have it in quotes because that's how you make a string, which we learned is just simply text. And so I could also add a space in front of the title here and have the same effect. But I wanted to just go ahead and hard code that because I figured most people would just go ahead and type in whatever title they have here. So all it's doing is it's 
taking all of that, it's putting it together. And so in this case, it's Titan Mordecai with the space and it's making that the player's name. So the same thing is true with all of these if statements. So if we have that Boolean where we're going to change the player's health when the equipment is picked up, if that Boolean is true, then we're going to change the player's hit points. And how we do that is it's player.hitpoints equals prop new health. Now, once again, the prop new health is whatever the value is that we set within core, which is referenced up at the top to set the player's health. And so the difference between player's health, or sorry, I should say player's hit points and player's dot max hit points is the, the base hit points is whatever it's set to. So for example, if we didn't change the max hit points and we only changed the player's hit points to say 500 and the player's max hit points was 100, the first time they ever took damage, the player's health would go from 500 all the way down to 100 with the first shot, regardless of how much damage it did. So we also have to set the player's max hit points. And so that's why we do both of these. The only line that looks weird in these if statements here is the canned uh, the player mount. And because the Boolean is written in such a way can still mount. If you check it, then it's true, which means this would be false. Or sorry, this would be true, which doesn't equal false, so this wouldn't run. So if we have it unchecked, then this would be false, which equals false. So this this if statement then would mean it's true and then the player can mount equals false, which basically this means that the player can't mount if they pick up the equipment. If we have the this check, uh, if we have this Boolean selected. So if we uncheck that, the player can still mount even after having the equipment. I could have wrote that a bit better. I know it's a bit confusing when you look at it in the code. I just didn't realize that was what was happening when I wrote it. So same thing's true with all these others. We're just taking, checking the Boolean if it's checked, and then we're just simply changing the player's health. Now, this is gonna get a little more advanced. This is all pretty basic code, but it will get a bit more advanced with the regen. And so what we're doing here is we're checking if we have the regen active. Now the regen is when my character picked up the helmet, we've seen that it they're just constantly gaining health back. If regen is active is true, with this boolean right here, then it's going to call a different function. And the reason I'm calling it in a different function is because we're doing something a bit differently with it. We're using, we're, we're calling this function and within this function, we're passing the player when we call the function. So this function knows what the player still is. And in the while loop, so a while loop is, is as long as whatever we have after the while is true, just like an if statement, it will keep running the code over and over and over until this is false. And so we're checking if the player is you know, a valid player again, and we're also checking if regen is active. So if it got to this function, chances are it is active. So this while loop will start once the player grabs the equipment. So inside of our while loop, we have a few different if statements. And so while this is active, all this code right here will run, or I should say all this code right here will run, but only portions of it based on what is true. So if the, so our first if statement is if the player's hit points are less than or equal to the player's maximum hit points, so that means if they're missing any health basically, then we are going to do something. And so what we're doing is we are making a new variable. And the reason why we're making this new variable is new hit points is because we're going to be using the same math throughout several different if statements. And so the math is that if the player has 
less hit points than their max hit points, then we're going to take the player's current hit points and we're going to add whatever the prop regen health is. So if we go back to core real quick, that's this right here, the regen health. So that's how much health per tick the player regener regenerates. And so now that we have this piece of math here stored as a variable, we're able to then, instead of having to rewrite player dot hit points plus prop regen health, we're able to just, it, it makes it easier in the code later to just see. For example, our next line is, if the player's hit points are less than the player's max points and prop regen, so as long as the regen is more than zero, then we're going to do this math right here which is new hit points is less than player's max hit points, then player dot hit points equals new hit points. And so basically what it's doing is if our current hit points plus the regen hit points are less than the max hit points, then we're going to go ahead and add whatever this equals to. So for example, just imagine this was a hundred for the player dot hit points plus twenty-five. And so it would be 125. So as long as this is less than the max hit points, which in this case it would have to be 125 or 126, then it will actually go ahead and apply 125 as the player's new hit points. If that isn't true, then it's going to take the player's hit points and just make it the max hit points. And the reason we're doing that is because we know that because of this entire if statement right here, that we're trying to give health to the player, not take it away. And so that means that if this is over the maximum hit points, we just go ahead and set the player's maximum hit points. And if we didn't do this else statement, if we didn't do this check, and we just had this right here outside of this if statement, so, so just imagine that this was gone. If we didn't do that check, it would do one more tick, and the player's health would, in this case, be 150 before it stopped. And that's because it would run through this code one more time and then finally, this would be false. So we'll go ahead and do that. So then we have an else if the new player's hit points, so the math once again of this, is greater than the regen amount, and the regen amount is less than zero then the player's hit points equals new hit points. Finally, we have else if. So basically on this one, what we're doing is if, if the regen is negative, it's basically decay. And so we could set it to negative, which means that instead of gaining health, the player could lose health. And because it's a negative number, it's still the same math because up here, the number would be 100 plus negative 25, which would be 75, All right? So it decays the health. And then the final else if statement is if basically the player is at zero, then just go ahead and kill them. And so if you didn't want the player to die, and you just wanted them to lose health over time down to zero, in this case, we could just comment that out. Or we could change it where basically it's not equal to. So I know that's probably a bit confusing, even going back through it, that's a lot of nested if statements, but that's essentially what that all does. And so the best way to think about code is the computer simply reads it line by line, but it reads it in such a way that when it gets to certain if statements, 
that it skips different portions. So for example, with this if statement, if this wasn't true, then it would just go ahead and end. Or sorry, it would it would go to yeah, it would end. And then it if we did if this was true, then it would go to this if statement first. It would just do one of these things and then it would finish. And so because it's a while loop, because it's running it over and over and over, if we don't put this task dot wait, then the loop would just run infinitely and crash our computer or crash the program. And so we have to do this task dot wait. And what this is doing is when you normally write task dot wait, it's like this, right? So this means that after it completes the loop, regardless of what happened within this loop, after it completes all of this different logic, then to go ahead and wait. And that specified time is once again in core in our custom parameters, and it's the regen tick time. So if we have it as zero, it's simply just doing a update every time the server updates. If we, if we put one here, then it's doing it once every second. And so that's all that does. And it's just taking whatever we put in the custom parameter or custom property and it's adding it to this task.wait. So let's uncomment this. And then we have one other thing that if the player dies, um, they can either die from this or they can obviously die from getting shot. So in this case, they would die from decay or they could die from getting shot. And because we had an event listener set up all the way when the player first joined, that this function will be fired if they ever die, regardless of how they died, then we run this function down here. So simply all this is doing is on player died right now, it's just unequipping. And so it, what it's doing is it's running it's passing the player once again, and it's running another function. So this is kind of uh, a bad way of doing this right now, but if I didn't do that, then I would have to take it and put it here and put it you know, elsewhere as well. So I just go ahead and put it in another function, and then it just instantly calls the on unequip player. So for example, if you didn't want the player to lose the equipment when they died, you would just comment this out and they wouldn't it wouldn't ever run this next function that we're going to be discussing and so if we did have this where they died and they lost their equipment then what would happen is it would run this function pass the player once again the very first thing it would do is it would run another function and we pass in prop helm so if we remember prop helm is all the way up at the top and it is the actual model of the equipment. And so basically what we're doing is we're passing that to another function down here. And all this does is it checks if the object is valid. If it is, it destroys the object. And so that means that on an equip, it just simply deletes the helmet is basically what that means. And so it deletes the 3D model, but the equipment, the actual trigger and the script is still attached to the player. And so what we do is a for loop. Now this just, I know this looks confusing, especially when you're new. Um, basically this is just a variable. And so it's saying for a variable that we don't care about, in this case, underscore. So for the variable, the equipment and so what we're doing is is we're in pairs so we're basically getting all the players equipment and in this case we only have one piece of equipment I believe we also have starting equipment as well like the uh, the gun that we start with and so it's getting all the players equipment and then it's running a for loop which is similar to a the while loop but it only runs through all of the different stuff once and so it's getting all the different equipment so in this case it would del it would unequip our helmet and it would unequip our weapon. And we're doing that by passing in equipment and doing unequip. So this line here 
we are changing the prop region active to false and what this does is if you remember our while loop prop region is active it sets it to false and therefore this this while loop this check right here on line 91 fails and therefore the while loop stops which means the player stops getting health back and so if we didn't do that if we didn't set this to false even though the equipment is deleted and the object is visually off of the character the character would still be regening their health because this while loop would still be running because it as long as all of these things remain true it just keeps running so we make sure to set that to false now if you recall on game start or on player join sorry on the function if we go back up to the top we took all of the players original values and we stored them in a new variable so we took all of the original hit points max hit points all that stuff and we stored it in a variable and so now on unequip what we need to do is we need to set all of the player's stats back to the old stats and so we're changing the player's hit points back to the old hit points we're changing the player's maximum health back to the old maximum health etc so that's what this does and so that's pretty much the code I know we went through it pretty quickly um, for some of you for others it was probably too slow but the gist of it is is that this is coded in such a way that allows you to do all the different stuff through custom parameters but you may not need all this different functionality and so you could take bits and pieces of this code so for example say that you just simply wanted to change the player's health on pickup you could delete all of these other if statements and not even worry about this because this is the most complicated piece of code in the entire script and just have it change the player's health. The only thing you would need to do is just once again remember the player's old health if you ever wanted to switch it back. So that's pretty much it. If you have any comments or any questions rather, please, please leave them in the comments down below. Once again, if you want to download this entire script and, and once again before I actually upload it, I'm going to actually go through and I'm just going to add a little comment. So a comment I should have explained when you put dash dash, the whatever I type here, the the computer just skips it. It just sees that and it skips it. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us to to oops it allows us to comment the code. So it allows us to basically leave little notes for ourselves or anyone else that's going to be looking at the code in the future about what each thing does, where it's referenced, stuff like that. And so before I upload it for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and go through it and comment different things. That way, when you have the code in your hands, you can actually kind of read the comments and kind of understand what each line does, uh, as opposed to having to rewatch the video. You could just have it, you know, easy notes to take a look at. So once again, if you want to download the script and the entire piece of equipment, so basically if you don't even want to really learn the code, but you want an easier way to take a piece of equipment and change values on your player on pickup then go ahead and click the link down below to go ahead and download the equipment and the commented code so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up once again if you have any questions do so in the comments down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want more core related content i'll catch you next time titans